The 12th Special Forces Azov Brigade helped to avert a catastrophic situation in New York in Donetsk Oblast, unblocking surrounded Ukrainian soldiers and regaining part of the settlement, the brigade said. New York lies just south of Toritsk, a key frontline town that has become one of the focal points of the Russian offensive in Donetsk Oblast. At the time the brigade was deployed to the area, the situation on the front line was catastrophic, the Azov Brigade said on X, however, thanks to the high morale, courage, and professionalism of the brigade's fighters, Azov managed to stabilize the situation, regain control of part of New York, and unblock the defense forces, which were surrounded by enemy troops. The Azov Brigade nevertheless acknowledged that the situation in the settlement remains tense as Russian forces conducted up to 15 ground assaults in the unit's area of responsibility within a day. Russia has been pushing deeper into New York over the past weeks in an attempt to encroach on the important town of Toritsk. While Moscow has repeatedly claimed a full capture of New York, the Azov Brigade refuted the statement, saying that Ukrainian forces continue holding the defenses. Ukraine's success in the area appears to be corroborated by the crowdsourced Deep State Monitoring Service, which shows Ukrainian forces regaining ground in northern New York and in neighboring Nelopivka. Russian security officer Igor Strelkov, serving a sentence in a Russian prison, wrote a letter regarding the Ukrainian armed forces offensive in the Kursk region. He predicts Russia's defeat in the war. According to Strelkov, the Ukrainian armed forces not only stretched out Russian forces with their Kursk operation, but also demonstrated to the entire world and, above all, to Russians, the impotence of the Putin regime. He also suspects that Ukraine may be preparing another attack on another part of the front. I continue to expect a possible offensive by the Ukrainian armed forces in the Crimean or lower Dnieper direction in September, no later than mid-October," Strelkov wrote. He stressed that the current tactics of the Russian Federation in the war, which consist of missile attacks on energy and frontal attacks on Ukrainian villages, will not lead Russia to victory. According to Strelkov, this will only exhaust Russia. This word hangs over our military campaign more and more more and more clearly and more and more threateningly, no matter how hard our official propaganda tries," the Czechist stated. It should be noted that Strelkov is an accomplice of the Kremlin in the war against Ukraine. He helped Putin's regime to start aggression by participating in the occupation of Crimea and Donbass. The International Criminal Court sentenced him to life in prison for shooting down a Malaysia Airlines passenger plane. Strelkov is currently in a Russian prison, not for the plane, but for his brazen criticism of Russian dictator Vladimir Putin. He was sentenced to four years in prison. Recently, Russian mercenary Yevgeny Skripnik, who in 2014 fueled the war in Donbass together with Igor Strelkov, has become despondent. He complained about the huge losses of the Russian army in Ukraine and called for the resignation of Vladimir Putin. The mercenary noted, that the current situation at the front is very different from what it was in 2014. The Russian army is currently suffering colossal losses and at the same time has no chance of winning. Skripnik called for the immediate resignation of Russian President Vladimir Putin and the entire leadership of the country for the lost war. The odious deputy of the State Duma of the Russian Federation the well-known imperialist Yevgeny Fedorov, who likes to threaten the West with nuclear strikes, became sad because of the Kursk operation of the armed forces of Ukraine. He pounced with accusations on the military and propaganda who lie about the imminent liberation of Russian territories. Fedorov emphasized that the Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region has not been stopped. The Ukrainian armed forces are seriously advancing in this section of the front, including towards the Kursk nuclear power plant. He called on the propaganda to stop lying to the population that the Ukrainians are about to be thrown back. If you pay attention, there is no mention of any three days of throwing NATO troops out of the Kursk region. Well, we see it. The governor announces that another 10 villages have been evacuated. Listen, if there is no offensive, why evacuate the villages? Kuchatov is closed. It is closed by a special separate decision. A special siege regime is introduced there. What does this mean? That the fighting is moving towards Kuchatov? Well, that's clear. This means that sabotage and reconnaissance groups are expected in the city of Kuchatov at the very least. 
This means that enemy troops are moving seriously and effectively enough for this kind of possibility of enemy ground armed units infiltrating through our combat formations to appear. It's a joke when we are told what official propaganda told us two weeks after the invasion of the Kursk region. This is evidence that the enemy is dying. This is his last spurt from the grave. This is ridiculous. Tens of millions of people have been loaded with this approach. Fedorov complained. Recall UN Nuclear Agency Chief Rafael Grossi said after visiting Russia's Kursk nuclear power plant that there was a risk of a nuclear accident and the situation was serious. The danger or possibility of a nuclear accident has emerged near here, Grossi told reporters, referring to the fact that fighting is taking place in the surrounding Kursk region. Grossi told that the plant was extremely fragile because it had no protective dome.